Let's talk about the journey of the first book and then and, and then we'll move on to the others. Sure. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. The first book was hard. It was so hard. Like I remember I pushed back the deadline like three times. And I, I, I there was a point when I thought it was going to be ready in 2016. And I had to, I remember I pushed it back six months, pushed it back another six months. And I was like, it's just not good enough. And I wasn't, you know, I wanted to write the book, the first book myself. Yeah. Like I, I didn't want to do it with a publisher. And I also had oh, this idea. Did you idea, self-publish like, that one, the first book? The first one was self-published, but only, but only for six months because then a publisher bought it and picked it up and put it in bookstores. But I really wanted to do it by myself um, because I didn't really like, I don't know, intuitively it was like, you know, just try to do it with yourself and, and try to, you know, have friends and family edit the book so that, you know, there would be as minimal mistakes as possible. But I also had the sense that like back then, like a publisher wouldn't have given me a deal. And I had to kind of just like prove that, you know, I could be able to sell it. And um, the I ended up releasing the book, I think it was September of 2017, the self-published version. And that version ended up selling like maybe like 12,000 wow. copies. In That's six insane. Months yeah. The time. Yeah. Back then I was like, <laughs> oh my, I couldn't even believe it, you know, because I was like, and it was such a dream because I also like, you know, going back, like I grew up really poor. So I would, I remember during that time I would go to sleep and then wake up and I would see like money in the account that, that happened like while I was, you know, people buying books while I was asleep and that just blew my mind. Wow. But I ended up signing a deal with um, Andrews McMeal and they ended up, um, you know, we ended up doing like a, a revised version of the first book. And we released it again in 2018 that had a few more poems and a few more essays. And then we, um, it was in bookstores everywhere after that. Wow. So you're saying your first book, that was when you started making money for the first time through your writing? Yeah. So it took, it took like three years. Yeah. Just to write the book. Right. But I also, people don't realize that you started writing, what was it? 2014. So it's like, there's a few years where you're doing this and you're being really consistent as an artist before you're like making any income from it. Yeah. And you'll find that with like 99% of other artists, like when people, whenever people ask for my advice, it's like, you don't even need to be the best at whatever it is you do. You just need to be consistent. If you can continue, mm. like, you know, have that determination to keep going, keep going, eventually things will pan out for you. And you see that across podcasting, you see that across writing, like with whatever field it is, you know, you have to really be determined. Yeah, I believe that too. What motivated you to stay consistent in those early years? What motivated me, honestly, was the audience was like people were really loving. And, and you know, when you write by yourself, you could be writing something, but you don't know if it actually makes sense. <laughs> you don't know if like other people will understand yeah. it. So I'm really grateful that Instagram was there because I could share it. And then I can see like, oh, I could have been clear. Oh, you're getting feedback, direct feedback. Yep. Yeah, that constant feedback and seeing what resonates with the audience and what doesn't. And also also checking in with myself, like even if this doesn't resonate with the audience, do I love it and still feel like it should be out there? And being able to spend time like cultivating that. But during that period of 2015 to 2018, you know, things were slowly growing. And I, you know, I think it got up to like 400 or 500,000 followers or something like that. And I was like, wow, this is really taking off. Okay. So that's a plus of creating and sharing on social media as an artist is you get that instant feedback. But I know from my experience too, on the flip side is like, you can let that influence you a little too much, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it can influence what you choose to share. It could influence your writing. Tell us what that internal processes like for you? Like, do you think about, oh, what are people going to think of this? Or, oh, people don't love this topic or, or people love this topic. So I'm going to write about it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's an interesting mixture, which I take a lot of influence from the music industry where like, you'll notice that some people, when they release an album, they will write like two pop hits. And then the rest of the songs are more like for them kind of heart centered. And it's mm. like, okay, this is what, this is my real, this is the real me. This is what I'm trying to put out there. And in a way it's almost like a marketing tactic where it's like, at first you can kind of have to try to get people's attention and see if they'll even, you know, if you can take a second of their attention, maybe they'll give you seven more seconds and then they'll take time mm. to read a longer piece or something like that. So 
I do notice, okay, I can see what's popular because there's always trends in social media in terms of like, you know, there was a time period where self-love was really popular. And then there was a time period where letting go was really popular and boundaries. And, you know, like there's like these, these kind of, um, these trends and these topics that become really, you know, if you write about them, then more likely you'll have a hit. Yeah. But if you only focus on that, that I think it, um, it makes your work superficial. Because it takes away from what else you want to say. It's not that you don't, it's, it's not authentic, but it's like only one piece of your story, right? Totally. You become highly limited. And I think you end up finding like, you know, even if you have like 3 million followers, the people who end up buying your books or buying whatever it is that you're creating, they're going to want the depth. They're not just going to want like the, you know, the, the one meme that's a hit or anything like that. So, right, you know, you course. can get people's attention with like a meme hit, but then after that, they're not going to, you know, they're really going to trust you after you give them real depth. Mm, I love that. Another thing I'm curious about is, I mean, I love journaling. So do you journal and do you keep the writing separate? Like, oh, this writing is for them. And then this is for me. <laughs> and what does that look like? Oh, uh, that's a really good question. I have like um, really scattered, like I have a lot of journals that have three pages full and then like they're totally empty. And <laughs> I've tried to journal, but I haven't really ever been able to stick to it because I've just, if I'm going to spend my time writing, then I usually just like open up a Word doc and I'm like, let me see what's coming out. Yeah. Because essentially when I read your work, it's like, it's a journal excerpt almost. Like it could be, right? Yeah, it definitely could be. Because it's very reflective. Yeah. So it feels like in a way, I'm definitely reflecting just openly. Okay. So you actually share most of the things you write then? A lot of them. A lot of them. I've also lost a lot of poems. Like yeah. I've said this before. I've, I've done a few writing workshops and it, I think it stresses out my editors and stuff. But sometimes like I'm walking, you know, in the street or I'm, you know, in a cab or I'm in the train or doing something and, and I get a moment of inspiration and I open my phone write a poem in one of my notes in my phone, but then like come a year later when I'm putting a book together, I can, I can't find the poem anymore. So, <laughs> really? Yeah. So some of them totally oh. just get lost in the ether, get lost. In oh my phone. God, that's hilarious. Yeah. And some good ones too. I remember <laughs> I spent time being like, I know I made this thing, but where is it? And I just like, wait, you, you write it down in your phone notes? A lot of them. Yeah. And you can't find it? So is it, are your notes just insane? They're just, they're like full of tons and tons of words. Wow. Yeah, so I, I end up sharing maybe <laughs> I end up sharing maybe like probably like forty percent of what I write. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, also on social media, do you like choose what to share, or do you basically share everything? Like, I understand for a book, you want to choose the best, right? But for social media, do you b- share most of what you write, or is, do you still filter it? You know, I'll share maybe like ten percent of a book. Um, but then I also, one of the things I'm really grateful for, for social media and specifically Instagram is that it gives you the opportunity to give things away for free. And I know that there's people reading from all over the world who just probably don't have the money to buy the book. Mm -hmm. So I totally respect that. And if you want to get a sense of what I'm writing, you could just scroll down the Instagram and get a clear idea of like what the message is. Um, so I'm grateful for that, but You know, I run my own, like the Instagram account, I'm the one posting every day. I'm the one making the memes. I'm the one, you know, like I haven't, um, only when I go away to meditate for long meditation courses, then I'll have my wife's little sister, she'll post for me. Oh, wow. And I'll just like line, I'll line everything out for her for each day or what she should post and all that. But other than that, when I'm here in the world, I'm the one doing it. That's amazing. It's like, you would think that you have like this big team and you're... I don't know, (laughs) but it's, it's nice to hear that 